Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from around the world. It's Christmas, so Merry Christmas to those who celebrate it. Happy holidays to those who don't. And it is time for day number one of the G League, one of the most prestigious, not even just Dota tournaments, but just esports tournaments in the world. Uh, I am your host, LD, to, uh, for today. I will be joined by Bruno, although it seems he is having a uh, Skype problem for the moment, so hopefully he'll be back soon. But before we dive into today's match, I do want to talk a little bit about the tournament, as well as how we got to this point. Uh, so, as we look at the groups, there are two groups, and the basic format for the tournament is group stages followed by playoffs. That is the, essentially the format. Each group stage is going to be a best out of three. Every team plays each other round robin. The bottom team from each group is eliminated, so whoever finishes last in each of these groups will be going home. The other three move on into the playoffs. The, the second and third place teams will be put into a, a four-team bracket, essentially. Uh, two, number two from one group will play number three from the other. And then they'll move on to play the first place teams. It is single elimination for the playoffs. So it's going to be pretty tough for these teams. There's not much margin for error once you get to those playoffs. Uh, as far as our schedule goes, we're going to have one match a day for the most part. You can find the full schedule right below the stream at twitch.tv slash beyondthesummit. So be sure to check that out if you would like. It looks like Bruno is back with me. Hey, Bruno, hey, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. My modem decided to restart for no reason, but hey, better now than during the game, right? Yeah, well, knock on wood that that doesn't happen. So just talking <laughs> a little bit about sort of the, the background leading up to this tournament at this point, uh, coming into this event, for anyone who doesn't know, the Grand Finals, uh, at least, I don't think any of the playoff matches, but I know the Grand Finals are at this absolutely crazy, basically stadium in Shanghai. So if you haven't seen pictures of that yet, again, right below the live stream, you can check images of them out. That will be the venue, that amazing stadium. I mean, that's esports going from just being, you know, something that is starting <laughs> yeah. to become mainstream. I mean, all the way. That is, China's really ahead when it comes to that compared to the West. Oh, yes. Uh, they have lots of budget for doing crazy stuff, and they really, really like, I mean, they've been doing this for much longer, I think, than the European scene. And uh, in my experience with some of the guys that are running tournament in China, they're, they're just crazy. It's like they have lots of tools to, I mean, in their hands, and they're doing the best tournaments. I'm, I'm really excited about G League because everyone's talking about it on and on, and I just wanted to start right now. Not, yeah, me too. Not only is it a very prestigious tournament, but there is a lot of money at stake, and I think it is worth mentioning the prize distribution. Very top heavy. First place, thirty-two thousand. Third place. 1600 and even second place is only a quarter of first so winning this tournament taking the whole thing home is i mean that's bringing home the bacon the next step is maybe bringing home some some flecks of spaghetti or something it just doesn't compare yeah i mean it, it's a huge difference but i mean more incentive to win right i mean if you still have a second place or it's really close to the first then you get to that final match and you say well we tried we got here if we lost we just had fun and we're getting a lot of money anyways but right now you're very very you really want to to go for the first prize right oh yeah absolutely and i mean when we look at that first prize there's a lot of teams that could absolutely make it there. I think most people are going to be looking at, say, LGD China and IG mm -hmm. as the favorites. DK, they ha obviously, they I, th I believe they won the last G League, correct? Uh, I think so, yeah. Uh, I'd have to check, but I'm not sure. It was Dota one. Uh, they probably won that. I think it was DK. I think IG won the last Ace League. Um, but yeah, it's uh, DK, a team that... I mean, right when they made their roster changes after the International 2, they would be one of the teams I think a lot of people would put in the conversation as uh, sort of most one of the most likely teams to, to have an inside shot at that. But they haven't really looked that strong. They looked a little bit shaky at G1, getting knocked down by LGD, and then again by Orange Esports, who was using Ice 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 and were not, was not on his home turf. Or they weren't on their home turf, of course, being in China. So DK, a team that... You know, maybe it's something to prove to the fans out there, but there's, this tournament is so incredibly stacked. Even some of the lesser known teams, like for Love, they've got, you know, the founding member of Nirvana China and Banana, an absolute star player as far as it goes. Very versatile and unpredictable. They had a roaming gyrocopter way back in, uh, I think it was the It's Goes to Asia Madness qualifiers. Uh, VG yeah. Gaming, the pub star team. There are so many storylines coming to this match, uh, at, or this tournament, and that even MUFC, you know, a team with a rising t carry in Ohio, as well as for this tournament, X Freedom being the stand-in. Mm-hmm. 
And you talk about BG. I mean, I've heard so many things. Like, don't worry, no one seen, no one has seen this team. But when you see this team, it will be better than IG, than LG, than DK, and all combined. And I mean, I don't know how much of it is true, but. People will dismiss them as the team that you don't know. Well, you have to pay attention to them. If only for all things that people, especially in the Chinese scene, are saying about them. Absolutely. So, as for this Group A, let's talk a little bit about it specifically. Uh, we've talked about the tournament as a whole. We've sort of introduced the prize pool. And at a very high level, we've skimmed over some of the teams. But as far as this particular group goes, DK, LGD China, LGD International, and For Love, it's pretty damn stacked. It is quite heavy, actually. Um, I think that most European people will try to relate with LGD International, if only because it's the only team that, you know, I mean, has European uh, players. And 1437 is actually Canadian, I think. So if, if, you've, if you're from a country from Europe or from America and you want to feel related to one of the players that's from your own country, maybe you have, might have luck trying to root for them. But, I mean, how can you not root for... Teams like ALGD China, the winners of the G1 League, or DK, well, you, you've been speaking about them a lot. For Love might look like the weakest link here. Uh, I think that the only experience they had in Dota 2 was during the G1 League qualifiers, and they lost to Dreams, and uh, there was another team they lost to. Uh, Flash Esports as well. So, I mean, they didn't play against any of the big teams, and they didn't perform really, really well. So, um, one would be tempted to say that they're the weak team here but again this is a whole new tournament maybe they've been training and they can bring surprises right yeah absolutely and i think in this group you know even lgd international uh, a lot of people oh you know western teams aren't as strong as chinese i think that has started to become the community consensus ever since the international too where seven of the top eight teams were asian and all of the chinese teams i think finished uh, in the top six, or maybe it's the top eight. Yes. I can't remember exactly, but it was quite high placing from all of them across the board. And yet LGD International, they took the GEST challenge. They took down their brethren in LGD China, and LGD China has looked very strong. So that is a very impressive accomplishment. Granted, LGD China was very tired after a 12-day <laughs> marathon of games, but even LGD International team, that it wouldn't surprise me if they placed first or second of this group. So it really is wide open. And with all that being said, Bruno, I'd love to sort of dive into DK versus For Love, which will be our best out of three for today. So as we take a look at this match, what are you looking for? What are you expecting to see from both teams? Well, when you talk DK, you have to talk about burning, right? I mean, it's, it's always the first thing you mention. When you speak about Dota 2, and uh, you have a new friend that's coming to Dota 2, and he's interested in watching about the pro scene, and he says, okay, well, I understand what is what. So if I have to pay attention to a carry, any single carry in the whole scene, everyone answers, you have to look at burning. I mean, because he's a legend, right? Yeah, it's, it's burning. It's the bee god. Uh, burning, uh, burning your soul, of course, if anybody... Yeah, of course. Not only that, I mean, in Dota 1, you know how uh, some heroes have uh, alternate names. Uh, like, Vengeful Spirit is A20 because of A20, the player, support player who used to play Vengeful Spirit. Well, for, since 677, Anti-Mage is called Burning now. So, I mean, there you have it. That's the way you get immortalized as a Dota player, when a hero gets your name as well. And maybe we'll see that in Dota 2 eventually. But, I mean, again, we talk about Burning, but there are lots of other things going on for them. Super has been playing as, a really, as, really good As Tony. you say that, uh, the Chinese stream is starting to introduce the players, and I'm glad you mentioned Super. Bruno, are you secretly a mind reader? Because they are introducing him right now. You see signature heroes Invoker, Panda, and Pugna. Uh, Pugna and Invoker kind of unorthodox, to say the least, in the current version. They're introducing QQQ now, 357. You can see all those support heroes. Venomancer, Crystal Maiden, uh, and Lena. And QQQ, he's been around for a long time. And he's also been partnered up in crime with uh, Dai, who we're likely to see very soon as well. Yep. Uh, the two support heroes from DK, QQQ and Dai. Uh, DK, a team that does not play jungle heroes, pretty much. Uh, and if they do, it's an Enigma or a Furion that they can put in the off lane. And if they're not getting too much far, they'll take to the... Um, to the jungle, but you won't see, probably won't see many chants or enchantress here, but if you see them, QQQ plays them. Yeah, and 
we were just talking about QQQ, just talking about Die, but who could forget about Burning? The three heroes that he loves to play as of late. I think these are quite accurate. We did see him play some semi-carry initiators and, you know, Slardar. Uh, even we've seen Panda in the past, but the low Druid has really ha had a resurgence. And then, of course, along with that, you have the Anti-Mage, uh, as well as the Faceless Void. The Faceless Void has been kind of star-crossed for Burning. Sometimes it's great, and then sometimes just really doesn't work out. And the final player for DK is ROTK. Clockwork actually making his signature heroes list, even though I haven't seen him play it as of late in Dota 2, but it is a very powerful offlane hero. Well, you have to guess that after LGD and LGD International started picking um, pretty much every single game, the rest of the Chinese team have paid attention to that and will try to do that. I mean, he's still a really good hero. He was really, really uh, pretty much the top of laner during the International 1, together with Windrunner. Then it fell off for a while, and uh, now well, it's, it's coming back. Yeah, and of course, we just saw 2-2 Two -Two getting introduced, the carry player for 4 Love. Are they going to skip the introduction here? No, we do have Hatsi, support player, and some classic supports there. Uh, the Lashrak, the Twin-Headed Dragon, the Lich. Uh, this 4 Love squad, haven't gotten a chance to watch them too, mo too much myself in Dota 2, uh, and I don't know that I've seen their new roster even in Dota 1, but I think Banana is really... Uh, the most notable player. That's definitely not Hansi, since they <laughs> already introduced him. Bet, yeah. And there you go. There's Banana, the man himself. He actually has transitioned to support. He started off playing a much different role when he began. This guy, to some extent, Banana really reminds me a lot of YYF. Perhaps not as accomplished, but, you know, he's that versatile. He's played pretty much every role at this point in China. Yep. And to, I mean, to pay attention to this, Hansi used to play... Uh, hard carry before in the G1 League qualifiers, but with our new players, he's playing support now. So now we have 8K. Look at those solos. Taker, Storm. I would love to see either of those played. And, you know, we have seen Taker be something that a lot of other Asian teams have used a lot. MUFC have been using a lot with X Freedom in Ohio. Uh, it's just, it started to come into popularity. We saw it a ton at the Asia. Zenith was playing it. Haven't seen it as much from the Chinese teams. Of course, we can all probably remember. If you've watched Dota for a while, you have to know about Dai's Tinker, although he does play support now. But uh, I actually don't know what his name is because it was a Chinese symbol. But the final player from 4 Love gets introduced. So. Bruno, as we head into this match, I think it is a good time to sort of break down notable heroes in this match. The big notable heroes that I have uh, mm -hmm. for this matchup, the first pair, six heroes, uh, or six sets of heroes, Night Stalker, Beastmaster. We've seen this a lot from LGD, the solo mid Beastmaster, especially from Xiao8. It's a hero that doesn't need as much farm as some of the solo mids we saw even a couple months ago. TA, Queen of Pain, Invoker, and it also offers your team a little bit more utility. This is something that I really think we may see out of DK or For Love, uh, even though we haven't seen it that much out of Super in the past, even so that like Panda sort of fits this role too. Uh, and that's something Super has been known to play quite a bit. Yep, and we've seen lots of times, I think this in the last week, uh, Beastmasters going mid, getting level six, attempting to go back, uh, but then TPing to a lane and ganking from there. So you bypass the wars, you just gank, and I mean, the kills start going, and even though Beastmaster is not a hard carry of any means, but uh, I mean, he holds the team a lot, and he opens the lanes a lot. Uh, very interesting pick. Yeah, along with that Beastmaster, our second notable hero. Yeah, let's do it. I was going to save it for later. But it's Anti-Mage, and it's not that we've seen him much as of late, but this is a game with burning, and it. it's something DK have turned to in the past when their backs are up against the wall, and they need to pull a win out of the hat. We saw it even in G1 when everybody was running the face rush lineup with Night Stalker, Bounty Hunter, as well as Fen. And with burning in the game, Anti Mage, hell, Ice Frog named the, gave him a flavor name uh, of Anti Mage recently in Dota One. <laughs> Uh, and actually on the live stream right now, they're showing people's predictions for the match. 95% DK, 5% for love. That's what the Chinese fans think about this. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm probably sure that um, the Western people think the same. But, I mean, it has to be played. It's a best of three. Anything can happen. It's not like a best of one where you just win and... That's it. So, for love, might take even one match, and that would be a victory for them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And along the lines of that anti-mage pick, the reason that we bring it up is not only that there's birdie in this game, but we've seen the pace of games slow down a little bit. We are still seeing a lot of aggression from Asian teams, but it's not 
IG G1 level aggression where they're just, you know, five manning past their tier twos at the 10 minute mark. Ferrari's on a, you know, a godlike streak at the, the six, seven, eight, 10 minute mark as well. It's, it's still aggression, but it's more calculated aggression. And as the game pace slows down, that's where Anti-Mage can have an impact. Another hero that can have an impact very early and that has really been a powerful pick in the Asian scene. I want to say Lone Druid was winning like 80% of the games that I cast at the Asia and LGD have used it to great success. It's obviously one of Burning's classic heroes too. The Lone Druid, something we might see in this in this particular matchup, and also something that could deal pretty well with the Luna because the bear is great at tanking Eclipse damage. Yep, uh, and uh, also so versatile. I've seen this last week played off lane, playing tri lane hero, playing mid lane. It, it's a really good hero, Lone Druid. You can never underestimate it. And I think the game's started. Yeah, it looks like the game should be getting underway. You can see the players right now at the desks looking pretty relaxed, looking pretty calm on both sides. Uh, for Love may be a tiny bit more tense, but nothing to worry about. Uh, they are playing against DK on LAN, and as, that, as I mentioned that, we are underway. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get into the game. Yep. And we see the first three bands. I'm surprised at how much Nyx Assassin has risen uh recently uh it was never picked i mean everyone was surprised when puppy tried them picking during the international too and he didn't receive many changes other than the new spike carapace but now it's seems to be first pick first band material right oh the next assassin absolutely this is you know this is a hero that's and one of the reasons it wasn't on our key hero slide is it's sort of a given right now in Asian Dota that Nyx is just going to be there. It's it's almost not notable because it's just so universally powerful. Xiao8 had an interview recently, I think it was with S Gamer, where he basically said, Nyx Assassin offers you too much map control. He's too much burst damage. He's too good to pick off support. So you just, he's a must ban or pick for them. And well, he does get banned out. For Love immediately snap up the Batrider and the quick response from DK. They get their hands on a Rubik Night Stalker. Going for that Night Stalker this early, something, well, it was really popular back in G1, but we have seen it can be countered. If Night Stalker doesn't have a good start, he doesn't offer you as much as a hero like Panda or Beastmaster does come the mid game. And there you go. Panda wow. and Lone Druid snapped right up. So a lot of the heroes we mentioned as key heroes being claimed very early by For Love. Yeah, and I'm actually surprised because Night Stalker has a really hard time playing against Bad Rider. He has to play really passive, especially those early levels. Uh, because being a melee hero, you know, you'll be stacking Napalm like crazy. Uh, but I don't know, maybe with a, a dual lane mid or something like that. And maybe, also maybe, Bad Rider decides to go to the off lane if they decide to do something different. I'm not sure. I mean, DK certainly has something in mind because they picked really quickly. But I don't know. I, th I think we have to see what the rest of the draft shows. Yeah, for the moment, the draft continues, and, well, I wonder what DK's going to secure here. They don't have a carry for Bernie yet, and that's something you know for love is going to be looking to ban out. A lot of his signature carries, things like the Faceless Void, the Anti-Mage. If DK don't pick it up here, they'll still be able to get it, but the pool will get a little more limited. They already have that support. They've got the solo mid for super, most likely in the Night Stalker. Uh, and I'm, I'll, I'll be surprised if they don't think about a burning hard carry here. Yep, and on the other hand, for love, he has his first three heroes. I mean, the one, two, and three position are right there on the table. There's none of those heroes that can play four or five. So DK should be banning pretty much every support they feel it's annoying, or maybe the junglers if they don't want for love to go for the jungle. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think at this moment, for love's draft shows a lot of what they're trying to do. Uh, well, DK is a little bit more hidden at the moment because you don't know and and you can see how important this pick is they're really taking their time with it and and the reason this last pick of the first phase is so crucial well there you go it's gonna be the face rush lineup for them they do tip their hand with that offlane pick up here but you know one of the reasons this third pick is now even more important is because there are three bands in the second stage so if you don't pick up your carry it's gonna start getting bad out that's exactly what we see from four love immediately the anti-mage ban will pro or the faceless void ban rather we'll probably see the anti-mage come next uh, and then I'm and the Luna and then oh the Luna that's a good point although I feel like with Panda and Lone Druid they're not as worried about Luna they've got the Panda ultimate to tank a lot of the Lucent beams on those non Magic immune pandas and then of course you have the Lone Druid bear too so I'm not it, it's a scary pick in some games but I feel like the Luna is something for love could probably deal with yeah how, how about the spend then oh, how the do you spend. feel about spend uh, I wonder if DK would go for him it's we saw Birdie played occasionally but. 
Not that often. They also enjoyed their slaughter from time to time. One thing they have to be worried about is how are they going to kill the Lone Druid Bear? They don't have damage now. They have two melee heroes who are vulnerable to getting entangled, as they tend to be in close where the bear likes them to be. Also, Brewmaster is quite strong at countering an aggressive lineup like what DK has if you try to initiate on his team. They do have the Night Stalker Silence, but as long if that's not on the Brewmaster, or if anyone's there to bail him out, then you're looking at cycloning a Tower Diver like Night Stalker and Pounty Hunter up in the air. Uh, I'm curious to see what they do the rest of the way, but I feel like 4Love did a pretty good job in this first phase of the draft. And also, the other question for DK, how do they deal with a push? And you know it's going to come at some point. You've got the oh, yeah. the great frontline tanks. Every hero on 4Love is fairly tanky, and DK lacking an anti-push right now. It's complicated, but they still have their supports to play. And uh, I mean, there are quite a few supports that can hold pushes really well. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they go for a Codal. And you know, the Ruby Codal dual um, tri lane in the, in the safe lane with Sam Curry is very, very popular right now. Um, and they do have the supports. And they, they decide to ban the Codal themselves. They don't want for love pushing with that as well. Mm. So I don't know. And they ban the Barney. I, I think we said all three of them Faceless Voice, Ven. An anti-mage. We were spot on with 4Love. There you go. It seems we both have had our coffee this morning, Bruno. It's something uh, mm -hmm. I'll be looking to have more of. <laughs> it's funny because it is, it's freezy where I am. And I talked to you yesterday. It's 110 degrees there. So uh, yep. it's getting hot, getting hot down south. And, well, it's going to be ice yep. and fire for this series. And speaking of ice and fire, how appropriate the double dragon gets the ban. Yep. And, uh, the oh, well, we'll get a shadow demon. But before I that, love, I love this pick. Yeah, very conservative, very defensive, uh, really synergizes with other heroes as well. I mean, you can initiate with him, let Bad Rider get close. Uh, I wanted to say something about Jakiro. He was first banned, first pick, well, not first banned, but first pick material pretty much uh, during the 676 patch. Now with a little nerf to Ice Path, dealing not 100 damage at level 1, but rather 25 and then 50, 75, and 100. People seem to say, well, I mean... It's not so strong now. I mean, he's still a very good pick, but not a first pick by no means. Yeah, I mean, we were actually seeing teams, like you said, first picking Jakiro. And he's still a strong support, but he's not like a Rubik. And that's the one issue with the Jakiro is he's just not that strong offensively with the nerf to Ice Path. When it was doing 100 damage, that's a ton of damage early on. And, you know, it's also really long range. It's spammable. It's still a great ability. But if you want to run him as a support... You lack a really scary offensive support, and then it's something where, you know, if the enemy team picks up like a Rubik or a Shadow Demon, they have a lot more potential to kill you off early on, and that's why we see, it was actually something on the Notable Heroes uh, slide that we wanted to talk about, but the Chinese stream had too much awesome content, so didn't get to, but yeah, Shadow Demon and Rubik have really been on the rise. These heroes are going to scale much better into the mid to late game, and they're also going to be more useful, and I love the Shadow Demon pick, because DK, very heavily single target focus, and Shadow Demon... Always a great hero to answer that. The Demonic Purge also going to be very effective against triple melee. DK haven't picked up Burning's hero, and I'm curious who it will be. They're quite melee heavy. Their laning stage doesn't look that strong. I think 4Love's got to feel pretty good about the draft so far. Oh, yes. I think that they... I mean, they, at this moment, without looking at the fifth pick, they have more damage. They have more utility. Um, they have a way to counter every single one of the heroes um, in DK's lineup. So it, it's looking pretty good for Fall Love now. But still, I mean, there's the last support missing for them and the burning scary for DK. And uh, I, I still think it could be a Luna. I, I think that they need I, a ranged carry. If, if they have four melee in their team, that will be really I hard to think, I almost think it has to be the Luna now, just because they need that additional burst damage that she gives you with Eclipse, with the Lucent Beams, uh, as well as the plus damage are. I, I'm not sure it's the best here to pick, because if you pop your Eclipse, Shadow Demon can always disrupt an ally. Uh, and, you know, you can disrupt the Luna. Illusions are... Uh, disrupting Luna is amazing because you get the Bouncing Glaives. You get really powerful DPSing illusions of your own. Uh, so I'm not sure Luna would really be the best pick, but I do feel like they're kind of forced into it right now. If you don't go for Luna, who do you go for? I think the other... Pickable carries her DK and Lifestealer. Lifestealer suffers from being very kiteable, and uh, you don't want a Lifestealer in this lineup. Uh, DK turning into a dragon, kind of a ranged carry when you need it in the team fight, uh, I think could work. But then again, I mean, these are not really common picks, and if you pick them, it's because you've been cornered into them. And they're going with the Wind Runner support. That's very interesting. We were really used to see Wind Runner in the three position, even in the solo mid. But still, a really good support. I mean, she needs levels, yeah, but she can do without as much farm, and uh, Shackleshot is a great spell. Um, 
I love this pick. It's another hero that's difficult to just bring down quickly. Uh, d and for love, just such a balanced lineup from them. They've got the big team fight initiators. They've got the defensive supports in the Shadow Demon, the Windrunner. They've got the hard carry and the lone druid. And I feel like DK is maybe not outpicked, but very dependent on the snowball, basically. It's got to start around that 6 to 10 minute mark. Because once the lone druid hits 6, the panda gets his ult, the bat rider gets some levels and some farm. DK is going to be squishy, and the problem for DK is they can't really punish the Lades, although they go for the Juggernaut. He has a very aggressive early game carry, offers you a lot of pushing utility, difficult to gank easily, is another melee hero. Birdie wishes us a Merry Christmas, and Bruno, we are getting quite a present from him. Oh, yes. Uh, but still, DK is saying right here, we're going to win fast, because, you know, Juggernaut... We call him a carry, but he's not a hard carry. Uh, I mean, he's not as strong with six slot items like an anti-mage or faceless void. Uh, he, he has a stereo skill in his crit, but it doesn't scale really well. I mean, and not as well as a lone druid that can get 12 items with him and this bear. So they have to rush this, and they don't have a pushing lineup in itself. They don't have a way to actually push really fast. But they do have heroes that you can put five of them together, and you won't want to be close to them because with the track kills from Bounty Hunter, the Tide Hunter ravages, you have lots of things going for you. And I'm interested to see exactly what DK is going to do in the laning phase. Uh, as I say that, let's go ahead and introduce the players. Guys, this is your first game of the G1 League, the inaugural Fire cast, and in fact, the first one. ever official English cast of the G of the G1 League. Did I just say that? The G League. Oh no. my god. I just did that. Oh man. <laughs> it does happen though. I've seen a lot of people make that mistake, including myself. But yes, this is the G League, your very first English broadcast ever brought to you by Beyond the Summit. We're delighted to be here and big shout out to, of course, GameFi and the organizers for G League for making this broadcast possible. Best out of three, DK versus 4Love. Four 4Love's four draft looking good on the side of DK. The offlaner, RTK, going to be playing the bounty hunter. The solo mid, super, rushing the bottle as Night Stalker. QQQ, or 357 as he's also known on that support. Tidehunter burning on the hard carry, juggernaut. And last but not least, we've got Die on one of his signature supports. It's the Rubik. Yep. And on the, le on the side of Four Love, we have Laundry apparently going solo mid. Uh, maybe he will rotate top. We have, uh, he's being played by 2-2, two -two. Uh, 8k on the Brewmaster heading for the safe lane, Hansi on the bad rider, maybe going mid as well, maybe going jungle, uh, I don't know, probably going jungle because of the items. Uh, then we have Biu 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 on the support shadow demon, and finally, the Chinese character, I think it's a ABF uh, on the Windrunner. Yeah, well, I'll take your word for that, I actually, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure somebody out there in the chat or in one of the, you know, comment, comment threads on the Western community sites can bring that up. But let's look at the lanes now. They're running Lone Druid mid. That's going to be the carry player, the Lone Druid, uh, or 2-2. Two -two. Lady against Super, a pretty good matchup. Lone Druid can dominate this Night Stalker in lane, and they've got the defensive ward. This is smart. They pretty much knew the Night Stalker had to be mid. And for Love, looking to punish that Night Stalker pick and his relatively weak, weak laning phase with a really strong 1v1 lane dominator. So I like this lane for For Love. They also have the Batrider jungling. Hansi, maybe doing some early mid pulls. Maybe not at level 1, but perhaps a bit later on. Even in the bottom lane, what is Bounty Hunter going to get? If he gets disrupted, soul catchered, and clapped, and there's a Sentry Ward there, he's probably going to die. For the moment, RTK is finding the experience, but this is another lane I think For Love can win. And then the top lane, the Windrunner. Well, she may have a bit tougher time between the, the Telekinesis Lift and QQQ wants to get aggressive here. And by aggressive, I, aggressively placing a ward with a walking away. <laughs> the Windrunner may get shut down, but I feel they are going to dominate these other two lanes. Yep, uh, and uh, there's nothing QQQ can do at the moment. He play he's trying to find that war, and he finds that defensive war right there. He knew that he had to place it there, but... I mean, there's nothing he can do. There's no threat to this um, laundry so early uh -oh. game. Uh-oh. This is some big damage onto that Windrunner. No, not gonna go. Would have been close to a first blood. Yep, I mean, if you get a lift and a spin, uh, Windrunner still, of course, goes for the level 1 Windrun. Oh, it's kind of far. Look at that. Now. They're going now. Oh, she's dead. Yep. This is something they don't want to give away. It's the one lane that was going to be tough for them. First blood by QQQ. And you mentioned the dewarding from the Tidehunter. That's going to be crucial now. They've, they've pretty much shut down the Windrunner top lane. It's something they should be able to keep her down pretty easily with that lift into spin combo. And Juggernaut's going to have boots where she will not. Uh, assuming he goes for them now, which he probably will. 
Uh, and also the Tidehunter can look to rotate mid, maybe smoke up with the Rubick, and that is the one weakness of the Lone Druid mid. If he gets smoke ganked, he can fall. Bottom lane, Bounty Hunter gets picked off by that Brewmaster Shadow Demon combo, and, well, he's not getting much out of this lane. He does have a level of experience, but about even with the Windrunner, and pretty much an expected death from him. Well, he's TPing now, and he'll get lots of experience because there's a huge, huge way pulling towards the tower, and there's nothing they can do to prevent him from taking a couple last hits and lots of experience, of course. Yeah, of course. The middle lane, how is it going so far? As far as farm goes, 2-2. Two, two. We're okay, top. 2-2, two, two, sitting mid, 8-3. and three. He's actually getting outfarmed by Super. Uh, Super using that Void Spam Bottle Crowing to get some last hits, but actually, surprisingly, not much harassment on him. You can see the, the bottle should be on the curry. Yeah, back at base for the moment. Uh, Super's getting more of the slate than he thought I than I thought he would. The bottle crow is helping him out, and I gotta say maybe the lone Jura just not quite maximize his potential in the lane. They do have a jungle bat rider, and he's already level four. So although they're losing this top lane, they're getting something in return for it. Yep, and the jungle bat rider is always a possibility. He's a really strong laner, so you might want to put in a lane. He can even go to the off lane and survive because of that firefly. But I mean, if you feel confident that you'll be winning two lanes. Uh, then put it on the jungle. He'll get fast level 4. I mean, 3 minutes level 4. It's faster than even a solo if you can do it right. Yeah, middle lane 2-2. Two, two. Last thing under his tower. Burning is really pulling ahead. He's got the boots up. He's up to 21 CS. And the lone... Oh, bottom lane. It's going to be Bounty Hunter getting picked off again, most likely. No clap. Don't need it. A kill is claimed. It is forcing them to buy a lot of sentry wards, but they're getting the kills. He's still getting the experience because, like you mentioned, the wave pushed way into the tower, but they are picking up a lot of kills. That's going to be for our panda. Most likely that really fast blink dagger. Arcane boots already picked up, almost level 6. And they've held onto their tower so far. So, uh, still a very even game. It feels like it could absolutely go either way. Gold wise, 4 love is leading. Experience wise, up by 1,000, and the one weakness of DK. Oh, and again, again. Oh, he's going to die twice. Really? Really? Oh, that's so unfortunate. He will drop again. TP's right into his demise. Oh, they're getting so many kills. The Shadow Demon is already level 5. Yep, and you never want your support to be such a high level. I mean, he didn't even have to pull a single time. Look at the Night Stalker's level. I think Shadow Demon might actually be out. He's out leveling the solo mid Night Stalker. <laughs> and also solo, solo mid Laundry as well. I mean, it's one of the highest level heroes in the game. But that happens when you get 3 kills so easily. This is when things get annoying for Super. You see the Entangle, some more auto attacks, and Tranquil Boots already up on the Lone Druid, which means you can Void Spam, but you're not going to be able to just solo kill him, because you can just Tranquil Boots, regen most of that HP back up. And Batrider already has the bottle, 800 gold up, level 5, not far off of those boots, and, you know, the Batrider, he can start to find kills. He's also a great counter ganker. That's something DK have to be really wary about. They have this tower diving lineup. They're pretty tanky. But there's a Panda who's getting a lot of farm, and there's a Batrider who's... That's going to discourage aggression from them, unless 4Love makes some crucial mistakes, and that's going to allow them to farm. And DK also not pushing down that early top tower. They got the kills. Oh, super. Got so low because of those entangles. He had two entangles in a row, but 2-2 two -two decided not to tower dive for that. Yeah, he's taking a lot of damage in this lane, and uh, we're starting to see the Lone Druid. Oh, he's still behind, though. He's, he's 21 and 8. Panda... Uh, Oh, no, he's not behind. He's even now with Super, which for me is behind. He, yep. He really I should mean, be ahead. It's two heroes against one. I mean, even if you don't last hit with your bear, you can put him to harass and make him play more cautiously. But still, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's big plays by Super. He's playing this cautiously. He's not going for the dive. He knows that he can't kill him so easily. So he's getting the last hits. And the night time comes right now. So he's going straight to the rune and then to gank. Let's see if he goes for that early smoke of deceit, the TP gank. Uh, maybe to that safe, maybe to uh, his safe lane, uh -huh. just because the Windrunner is looking pretty uh, tasty. And he's got the regen rune. He's only level 6. Doesn't have that maxed out void. He does have one point in the silence, though. And they need that. They're up against Panda. You've got to be able to silence him uh, so he can't pop his ult. Even heroes like Windrunner and Shadow Demon are going to turn a fight around in a hurry if you don't silence them. Sometimes we do see the Chinese skip that, but this is not a game to do it. Top lane, dying QQQ, thinking about a Windrunner initiation. They're going to pull her back, lifting her in, but just no follow-up. And she, she stemmed the bleeding. She's got her boots up, she's got wards down in the lane, and DK just not finding too many kills. Yep, she's a bit under level, compared one level less than the Bounty Hunter, which has died three times. So, I mean, that tri lane is doing work, but I mean... It, it's his Windrunner, as we said before. You don't need that much. You can just get her rolling, and uh, the power shots will be able to help with pushes. Just one level on Shackle Shot still does a lot. 
Uh, so it's fine. She's just doing great. Bottle and Tranquil Boots and level 7 now up on the Batrider, farming that jungle, stacking tons of camps. Uh, just missed stacking that one, but it's getting the double stacks up at the pole camp. And DK are not ganking, they're not pushing. One of the big strengths of that Juggernaut is he can get a lot of kills in the laning phase. He can also push really hard with the healing ward. Bernie's also not going for a particularly greedy build. He's not rushing to Midas or Battle Fury. He stopped off for Tranquil Boots. He needed to because the supports were pulling a lot. So I feel like DK is just not getting enough out of this landing stage. A lot of it's going to except for the Bounty Hunter, who does hit level 6, but a lot rests on him. And can he find those track kills when he's up against so many powerful defensive supports? It's not going to be easy, but if he can, I think that's where DK will start to get back into this game. But they're behind by quite a bit. Over 2,000 gold, as well as almost 3,000 experience. And that's a lot to be down this early. Yep, and they seem to be wanting to go on that Night nice Soaker, because we see Bad Rider and the Shadow Demon lurking there. But Nice Soccer playing really defensive now, and uh, he doesn't really care. He has a thousand HP now. <laughs> He's going to get that illusion rune. Uh, he does it. Vampire versus bear, who's faster? Apparently, the vampire is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're diving the Windrunner now. There's four heroes top. Windrunner knows they're there. Uh, what can she do right now? I mean, uh, she probably will fall, but do they, they're not going to get a track kill off of this one, most likely. She's still running. She's got a shackle. She's got her wand. Here comes the defensive support from Shadow Demon. Too late. Doesn't cancel his TP. Could cost him his life. Soul Catcher on Super. Big mistake. Not canceling that TP. Banana, normally known for his savvy veteran wisdom, but makes a crucial error there. And they get two kills. And when this team gets kills, that's where they can really start to push towers. Losing the Windrunner, it was four heroes ganking. They're kind of expected, but losing that Shadow Demon, and he's very highly leveled. Never should have happened. Yep, and they might go again for that wind run, right? She says, no, probably someone there. Mm -mm. Oh, 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 no. They, I, they gotta I wish just... the Bounty Hunters here for all this, but hey, he's getting levels bottom. They're gonna pick off the wind runner. Easy anchor smash. Middle lane, the, the solo mid lone druid, one of his weaknesses is he can't really do anything about this. He's not a ganker, he's not really a counter ganker. All he can do is try and push this mid lane. They've rotated Bernie mid now. Pretty much a hero who's invulnerable to the lone druid. Even if he gets entangled, can always blade free out of it, so. I like DK's movement. Their laning stage wasn't the best, but they're making some good adjustments here as we start to enter the mid game. Yep, and they seem to be going to take that top tier one tower because it's not in deniable range. Uh, it's 135 HP, so the next push they might want to go for it. But they seem to know, just, just going back to the jungle, trying to see if they make, make something happen uh, mid. And uh, that bottom lane is free for the Brewmaster, who is more than happy to farm a few more creeps without a bounty hunter and without anything else he's, going on there. He's got his blink dagger. The bat rider's up to 1700 gold. Sure, for love are giving up these kills, but they still have the tier one top. We haven't seen any track kills. They're still leady when it comes to gold. In fact, they continue to pull away as far as experience. The same thing. They're giving up kills on the wind rider. Even the support shadow demon died, but they're getting so many trades elsewhere and once these double blinks come DK are gonna be in a lot of trouble it's gonna be really hard for them to clash and what makes matters worse is QQQ still not level 6 so I in spite of the kills going DK's way I still think for loves in a pretty comfortable position Panda takes some harassment bottom doesn't have any mana regen uh, HP regen maybe forced back a little bit but with the double blink they can look to go for some kills of their own yep uh, that mid lane, something is going to happen there. There's no sentry wars. They have to know that Bonnie Hunter is there, but it's invisible right now. And uh, there's also Juggernaut, so yeah. close. A wild, I'm take the tower. A wild bat rider and a wild bounty hunter both descend upon this middle lane. Here comes the push. This is the lone druid strength. He's a great pushing carry, even without items. The bear tanky the tower. The tower under siege. Is there a ravage yet? Tide hits level six. Will he look to come and join the fight? He is probably going to get a TP now. Panda jumps in, throws the ult out. Bernie has Omni Slash. Will they chase Bernie? Who are they going to focus in this fight? Bat riders flying around. The tower. Was it denied? Though the Radiant get the last hit. Now they pull in Super, who's found himself in the middle of five. And DK cannot fight into this without Ravage. Where is that Tide? He's arriving now. Will it be in time? Ravage on everyone. Anchor Smash as well. Now the Blade Fury. The chase is on. Defensive disruption. I think Shadow Demon's dead here. Will he die? Oh, fruit of his life. Hero Bear, and he survives with the Ravage. Absolute chaos, Bruno. Oh man. The lucky Entangle. He was going to die. That Shadow Demon had no way to survive, but that disruption bought two auto attacks from that bear. And that bear did what that bear does. Entangled the Juggernaut. And he didn't have the spin. He couldn't get out of there. He just died. Yeah, Burning just one he figured he'd walk in for that one last auto attack, but he got entangled 
wasn't able to pull it off. And now 2-2 as the solo mid low druid. His CS isn't amazing, but with that tower and with those kills uh, and assist gold for his team, the key thing is, Bruno, he never died. And it goes back to that early Observer Ward. Even though DK dewarded it, the lone druid just played it well, stayed close, and with the Batrider always lurking in the jungle, DK never really punished that lone druid solo mid. That's the way you could do it, but now he's getting close to the relic for love. I think for most people, certainly the lesser known team, if not the underdogs in this matchup, although DK has struggled as of late, they're looking pretty solid here. They haven't won the game by any means, but they're in a comfortable position. They're definitely not a 5% chance of win kind of team right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the fanboys of DK over in China, I think, talking. Yeah, uh, but I mean, looking at the farm that already has, uh, this, this laundry already has, he's looking at a 15-minute relic if he does things well. So oh, that's yeah. really fast, actually, yeah. Also, the Windrunner is getting a lot of levels now. The Bounty Hunter's a bit ahead, but it's not a huge margin. They're still pretty close. Bounty Hunter's head by about a level, and, you know, as mentioned, the jungle Batrider just gets more out of that jungle than other supports can, even if they're pulling. DK are smoked up behind burning, something they love to do, although a little bit early for them. Really reminds me of, of how IG was playing in G1 League, but can they have the same success? It seems for love with that defensive lineup, lots of strong counter initiate is fully prepared. In fact, they're smoked, they're headed bottom, but there's only three, and straight onto the, oh, Windrunner, this is an unfortunate encounter. No, Yikes. boy. That's a four hero track kill. Book it. Yeah. Bottom lane. If he wasn't a track kill, no, he's going to. Yeah, he's good. He's good, yeah. And they, now they know that they're all there, so. I mean, if it wasn't because of that bounty hunter, that would be okay. And then we see diving on the. We, uh, we see diving. The There's a, no Ravage. There's no Panda ult. So the big team fight ultimates are off cooldown. And DK are striking while there's a moment of weakness from the 4-love lineup. The healing ward not being focused, keeping everyone alive on DK. Diving the tower, surviving. Good micro from burning and just not finding the openings to pick it off. Panda gets zapped, trying to TP away. Shackle on two, but the Windrunner, who by the way is apparently named Yu, uh, that is what his name stands for, is going to be able to run away. But a lot of casualties. Lone Druid, though, wasn't fighting there. He's almost got the relic, so they're giving up a lot, but they are getting close to that relic. Yep, and, and this is the time where those track kills mean a lot. I mean, that 4 kill on Windrunner, have they not had the Bounty Hunter? It was an okay kill, I mean, you spent 4 heroes and a small to kill a Windrunner. It's an even trade, but with that track goal, I mean, it's 50 extra gold for everyone, and I think 75 for the Bounty Hunter? Uh, 150, 150. 150. Yeah, yeah, it really adds up. I mean, 3 other heroes, that's 150 gold. It's an additional 300 gold for him, plus hey, you're getting the kill, and, and that allowed them to push the tower bottom. And that's the one thing that DK really want more than anything. They want towers down, because they're a tower diving lineup. They're an aggressive face rush lineup. If the towers are up, it makes it a lot easier for the Panda, the Batrider, even the Shadow Demon to TP in, counter-initiate, and turn the tides of the fight. So that was, the importance of that fight cannot be overstated. Sure, the Lone Druid's farming, but it's something DK, even if they were still behind on gold, which they're not, would be very happy about, just because they got the tower. Yeah, they do have to be careful, though. I mean, they still are early game lineups. They don't have a carry that can stand up to the laundry if he really, really gets farmed. Oh. So they're doing that they have to do. Oh, the initiation. Here we go. AK jumps in. He gets he claps, but he gets silenced. Clutch silence from Super, preventing that panda. Oh, Ravage with the travel time. Look at the synchronization. QQQ casts Ravage before that disruption ends. But it doesn't matter, right as he comes out, the Ravage hits him, and the travel time perfect there, but it's a shackle on two. Super will fall, double kill from the Lone Druid, Angry Bear is here, and he's going to work on burning, Healy Ward down, no way out, or is there? He's got, uh, can he even get away? He's disrupted, he should be blocked in. Look at the surround attempt, tries to suicide to the neutrals, he will not get it, it goes to the Windrunner, and they really stabilize after what looked to be a pretty disastrous start to that fight. And it came to that initiation of the Bounty Hunter. With him dead, he couldn't track or do anything, so he died really fast. That Tide, um, yeah, the Tide Hunter ultimate was great. Just hit, uh, uh, I don't know who hit, uh, I think Bad Rider, or he came out of disruption, defensive disruption. And he did lots of damage, but then again, I mean, he cast synchronization it. for love. He cast yeah. it before disruption ended. It was a split second, but it was before it ended, and that... That requires some balls, because if you screw that up, Panda's ulting, and you're not killing him, and the fight goes completely the other way. Yep, and you know what? That Brewmaster didn't even have to use the ultimate because of that, so... Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you want to fight them again, you have to know that 
that ultimate is still online, and that will be a pain. It will be. So, Bruno, we have a moment, a calm before the next storm. 23 kills in 60 minutes. Pretty aggressive game so far after a slow start. Double blinks are up on the bat, the Brewmaster, we saw that. Also level 11 coming soon on the Brewmaster. Bats already have got it. And it's that second daytime, and this is the weakness of the Night Stalker-centric lineups. Is sure, they've got this really powerful burst damage ganking opportunities when it's that first night, but when it's daytime, Bounty Hunter can't do it alone. He's an off lane. everybody on 4-Love is tanky, so they're forced just to play defensively and farm. That buys time for the Lone Druid to push to get the Radiance up. He's got it now. Only a 16 and a half minute Radiance, which considering his CS wasn't that great early, is pretty damn impressive. Yeah, and they got that tier one tower bottom, and they are going to take the tier two if no one TPs. They might get a tier two top in exchange, but I don't think that will happen because that laundry pushes so fast. Yeah, there's no way. Night Stalker even backs off. He just he knows there's not an opening. The bear pulled back in by two two. Bat Rider lurking on the sidelines. I don't think DK saw him walk in here, although it is daytime. I think he's just yeah, he's just out of vision. The creep wave wasn't there when he went into the trees, and now he ducks in again. He's gonna get really aggressive here. I think they saw him that time, or at least they're expecting him to be there. But this is the beauty of having the double blink initiates is DK are forced off the tower. They're tied as a support. He doesn't have one, so they're getting these towers for free. And if 4Love don't have to use their ultimates, why stop? Why not go for the tier 2 mid? Why not extend your map control before that second night begins? Oh, LD. Look at burning items. Is he going for a battle fury? Oh, burning, burning, burning. I'm not one to question burning, but this is... How is the, how is the Juggernaut going to outcarry or outfarm a lone druid who's already got his radiance? They've got track gold, but they haven't got that many track kills, and once the launcher gets bigger, it becomes harder and harder to find them. This is... It's something we've seen from him a lot, Bruno. He he has shown a little bit of stubbornness. He doesn't really like to go for more of those aggressive builds. We did see him on Slardar go for the Blink Dagger, uh, the early BKB, and play more of a semi-carry role, but that was a in that epic 90-minute game between uh, DK and LGD China. But aside from that, he's almost always gone for the farming builds, even though the metagame has really shifted and... He's not playing the hard carry compared to the Lone Druid. Yeah, um, for the people who are maybe new to Dota and maybe you're tuning in for the first time to a tournament, the reason why we say this, uh, Battle Fury is a farming item. I mean, yeah, it gives you damage, but it doesn't give you any survivability, which you need early mid game. Uh, I mean, the cleave is good for farming fast items uh, to kill the creep ways fast. If you're going for that, you have to be gambling to win the late game and we talked on and on that they don't have the late game for them right now they, it's kind of complicated they could if they had a ton of track kills but without it yeah they definitely don't they pull a qqq into the lasso he's got the ravage but blowing it now well, might not be uh, oh, they did force out a panda ult but i think it's okay because they're right at the tier two mid and with the panda ult up they claim a tier two mid a bat rider lasso and a panda ult but they get a big trade and now this lineup for four love Maybe they can they even go high ground. They don't have a mech. They don't have a pipe. They're gonna pressure this lane a little bit. No, it looks like uh -oh, they're gonna. Oh, Rubik stole primal split. Oh wow. Yeah, that's 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 really hard to avoid, especially when you don't have it here. You have to clap in the ground, but clap costs a lot of mana for also, Brewmaster. 150 mana is a lot. It's also it's got a really long cast animation, so that's a, a huge clutch play from Dai, and also bold with five heroes right down the ramp from him. It's something, it's one of the easier ultimates to steal, but what the Brewmaster should have done is rotated his Earth Panda back a little bit sooner. It seemed like they were thinking about maybe going high ground and then decided to back off there. Uh, they were pretty far past the tier two before they turned around, so maybe miscommunication, but that is a costly thing to give away. Now, the Rubik, I think he's only level eight, yeah, so he's not gonna have this forever. And it looks like DK, while this is while this ultimate's on the Rubik, while they have, uh, looks like the, the nighttime should be coming soon. Devil They're gonna look damage. to make something happen with this Panda ult. Yep. Oh, uh, do they? No, the Vare doesn't see them because they're smoked. So the Vare thinks that there's no one there. Now they feel safe. They feel there's no one here, uh -oh. but they actually are. Here comes the tower dive. It's going to be RTK. No, no tower dive just yet. Everything spotted out. Wow, did 4Love really predict that one beautifully? Everybody. And in fact, they want to turn this around. Batrider's flying high. Blinks up onto the tree line. That's a really nice maneuver because he's still safe. He's still protected. But he's got that flying vision. He could see all of the movements of DK and make sure the smoke is fully dispelled. For love, great reactions, great team movement. Really nice anticipation. DK want to go roast. They've got the Ravage up because they didn't use him the last fight. And they've got the Panda ult. And they've got a Buckler on the, the Rubik plus the Healing Ward. They can do this. And I think For love are just not going to contest it. Well, they send the Vare. That Vare is going to die, but now they know they're there. And uh, 
Can they do anything about it? I don't think they can. They might try to go. But then again, they had two blink initiators, so... And, and let's not forget that Bud Rider with the Flame Break. He can just push everyone outside of the Roshan Pit. And that's what they might try to do. They're coming. They want to come from the high ground. That's why we didn't see them just run down the river. And here comes the Radiance Burn. First hit and tangle at QQQ, I believe. In comes the clap. The Ravage to counter. Brewmaster, no ultimate for him, but he's tanking. He's surviving. What a cluster F of a team fight. Power Shot going to clean him up. The bear will fall. I believe that was the second bear death. It was. So Lodrid's on the way out. He's trying to run away. Bernie's giving chase. Picked off and isolated. But can he be brought down? That sticky napalm stacking is a good way to try and run away. And they're still chasing. They're still chasing Panabalt back for this. He's coming back into the fight. He's got the Blink Dagger. He's got the ultimate soon. They give up. Uh, a couple of kills on both sides, but they defend the Roche for four love. It looked a little bit sloppy, uh, or not sloppy, but dangerous for them at first, but now they're going to go for a Roche of their own, and Rubik, he already used this Primal Split. It's on cooldown now. Yep, and I mean, before it gets off cooldown, it's, uh, it expired now. It just expired, so the Roche is going to go for four love's way unless they do anything right now, but no, no, it seems that Londra is going to take it. Now that's huge. This is a hero that can just throw his bear at you, bring a tower low, or even bring it down. The one thing 4Love don't have, in fact, both teams, I would really like to see a gem. This is a game which is all about finding those openings with DK, and that requires dewarding to do it, and on the side of 4Love, uh, making sure you vision up to try and minimize the chances of getting ganked. So uh, I'd love to see that early gem. We actually do see it on Banana. Great pickup from him. Nothing on DK yet, but they're a little bit poor. Yep, and uh, Juggernaut hasn't even finished his Battle Fury. See, this is what I say. Uh, if you get a Battle Fury at 10, 13 minutes, even 15 minutes, it's okay. But 24 minutes into the game, a Battle Fury is not going to do anything for you. And it's a Juggernaut. He's not the best Flash Farmer. He's not an anti-mage. He doesn't have the mobility. He's not going to scale as well into the late game. It's a very... It's just classic burning. He loves to go for these farming builds. He's... That's just... That was his bread and butter. That's how he became a superstar was... Back in the days when the metagame was much more about farming, and sure, it wasn't just that he farmed blindly, he always was known for making great decisions and arriving at fights at the right time, not getting picked up. There's more to being a top carry like Burning than just farming, but you've got to adapt to the metagame and to the game situation, and so far, the Battle Fury has really not done much, and I'm not sure if it's ever going to pay off. LD, you want in the gem? You have a gem. Look at Bew Bew Bew, the Shadow Demon. Oh, yeah. He's he, got a gem in his he, he has picked it up. He's had it for a little bit. Uh, I would like to see DK get one as well, because they're starting to lose. They've only got one outer tower left, and they're going to really lack for map control soon. Yep, and uh, again, I mean, Panda Ultimate is online, Bad Riders Ultimate is online. How can you defend this tower? If you even get just a thousand range from it, you have two guys jumping on you just at the same moment. So they're going to trade for a tier 1 tower. The bounty hunter is still not level 11, but at this point, it's, it's really hard. DK is not a, they're not a, they're not a tower trading lineup. They don't push fast. Uh, they're not going to be able to do this. So they, they get the tier 1 mid, but that's not a good trade for your last remaining outer tower. And now for love, the siege begins. They're really, this is exactly what their lineup wanted to do, Bruno, was, you know, get that... Don't give up early kills. Get to the mid game intact. Have these strong defensive supports. Now there's a mech up on the Windrunner. Uh, get the early blink daggers. Find a few key openings. And then when you're back off when your ults are down, and go back to farm. They're just they're getting everything they want out of this series and out of this match. And for DK, it's almost at a point where Rubik's got to steal Panda ult, and I don't even know what else. Maybe a disruption as well to turn <laughs> things around. It's really hard. And I mean. You see how different some heroes are in Dota too, uh, in Dota in general, of course. Uh, that nice Joker was trading even with that long Druid in the early game. I mean, the first 10 minutes, they were both in the lane and they were doing okay, same amount of creeps. Now you look at that nice Joker, he has a BKV entrance. Look at that long Druid, he has... I don't. I can't find the bear, but he has his radiance and, and a few he, more items. And he's got a hyperstone on the bear, and I think there's even something on the courier. Yeah, the recipe. Is it really completed? Is that assault caress ready to go? Uh, That's an assault caress. He's got the recipe. Where is the bear? Oh, uh, there the it is. bear's bottom. Yeah, he's got it. He's got an assault caress, and and this is such an important item to go high ground against DK, and it's also something which is going to make their heroes a lot easier to kill off. Yeah, yep. I mean, it helps everyone in your team. It gives plus five armor to everyone. Uh, heroes like Brewmaster are going to be happy. He isn't the most tanky of heroes, but I mean, he has HP, he doesn't have that much armor, but plus 5 is a lot. And minus 5 armors not only to heroes, but also to structures. So that 25 armor on that tower is now suddenly 20, 
And that bear also does 20, uh, 40 percent more damage to buildings. So I, those towers will be falling down so fast. I want to point out that the Night Stalker actually silenced the bear. And for anyone who doesn't know, uh, not only does the silence prevent you from casting spells, but it actually also does give you a chance to miss. And at nighttime, it's more of a chance. It's 40 percent. So it is one way DK can kind of stall this push. The problem, though, is Four Love aren't really blowing too much to do it. Sure, the bear took some damage, but. We'll see it go back to base, we'll see it heal up, and then once the bear comes back, he's still got the second cooldown, he's still got the Aegis. And DK at some point, maybe they try and go for a wraparound smoke gank, come out of that bottom lane, circle around with a few. Uh, there's no blink dagger on the pan on the tide, it's just, it's really hard to just jump in and kill anyone. Who do you go on? If you go on anybody except Shadow Demon, he disrupts them. If you go on him, Panda will counter initiates with the ult. It's so hard to actually find a pick. And forget about trying to smoke gang. Look at this war right here. And uh, uh, I mean, if they try to go bottom, if they even try to smoke in under their own tower, uh, in their own base, they will see that because that war gives lots of vision. They can see almost up to tier four towers. Uh, really clever play from Fall Love. The bear is back at full health, and he's going straight for that tower, which will fall oh, because there's nothing you can do. Look at that blade fairy just tickling the lone druid, not doing any damage. And it's one of the other things with Juggernaut is even if you go for damage items, if you're Blade Fury and you're not doing too much, because Slow Germ's not going to be magic immune anyway. Uh, so we'll see. Bernie just not able to find that opening to do a whole lot. He'd love to have another item. Oh, the ward that you mentioned, it catches out Bounty Hunter. ROTK gets picked off. And with that kill, if he doesn't have buyback, I think they're going for Rex here, baby. They are for love. Looking pretty strong. They're playing this one smart. They're slow rolling it. They're not committing too much. They've still got a bear resummon. The bear is taking a lot of damage. Probably will fall. No, he can send it back oh. to Fountain and do this all over again. And it's DK who can't leave their base. Burning is not a hero like Anti-Mage who can just split push really quickly and then rejoin the fight. They don't have a Keeper of the Light to pull him back. Their lineup not really built to deal with this Death Ball group up and push unless they got a lot of kills early. And they didn't. I don't know how DK respond to this, unless four lovers, they're not making mistakes. The problem is that, I mean, they target the bear, they, they throw everything at the bear, which is the correct thing to do, right? I mean, the bear deals more damage than probably any of the other heroes in four love. But I mean, it's a 2700 uh, HP hero with 21 armor. I mean, you, it really costs you a lot to kill that bear, and even if you do, you can resummon it, and then you have five more heroes. It's not like you're killing the car, you're just killing a tool from that carry that he can resummon again. That's At this moment, well, what can you do? Here BKBs we go. come. Here we go. The BKBs are out, but it's a shackle on two. I don't think it's going to be enough. They get the panda ult off, and now the Radiance Assault Caress there is chopping people up. Super gets entangled. They focus down the Juggernaut and the Bounty Hunter as well. The chase is on. Super trying to run away from Long Ridge, from downtown. The bear will find him, and now even QQQ in a lot of danger. Bruno, for love, crushed through the opposition to DK. They're going to take the first lane of Rax and most likely the game because DK just don't have that comeback potential. They can't fight 5v5 without an item advantage, and they've got a major disadvantage at this point. Behind by over 10k gold, behind by over 7.5k experience. For love are going for the jugular. They're going to take this game number one. Wow, I mean, they did everything well. In the end, they couldn't contest that bad rider going to the jungle. I mean, remember, at 10 minutes into the game, he was the one with the most creep kills. Uh, he was doing great. He got that early blink dagger. And of course, you give that safe lane for free to that brewmaster because you think, well, he's not a hard carry. He's not a faithless boy. Even if I give him something, I can take it back later, right? But oh, yeah. the problem is that they lost me. And that brewmaster got that double blink dagger. I mean, him and. After that, you have, yeah, you have some good. Team fight potential. Die soul. He stole clap. He didn't steal what he wanted. Everybody's melting. Everybody's dying right now for DK. They're all just melting to 2 2. He's doing so much damage. He wants to bring Super down. Forced to BKB just to get out of the entangle, just to run away. Bernie comes in, but he can't stay here any longer. There's your GG. We're headed to game two with four love leading the series to 1 0 on our opening day of Christmas action. Everybody, it seemed like the Chinese fans were expecting uh, Bernie to get a little bit of a Christmas present here with that 95% voting for DK to take the series. They could still take it, but they're not off to a good start. It didn't happen, but it was such a great game. And who do you think the MVP was here? I mean, who was the hero that was outstanding during this match? Uh, it's, it's hard to say. I, I gotta say, I think there's a couple of candidates. For me, one of the big ones would really be 
I, obviously, the Panda played exceptionally well. The Lone Druid did well, but he also had a lot of protection for his team. I actually want to credit the Windrunner. She had a couple of clutch tackles, as well as the Shadow Demon, who was always there with the disruptions. You remember a couple of fights mid, uh, where he's able to get away. Yep. I mean, and hey, credit the Spirit Bear for some lucky hero entangles, saving that Shadow Demon in the fight earlier mid. But really, this was a team effort for Poor Love. There wasn't one player who just carried them to victory, and, and that's a scary thing for DK to have to face. Yep. Uh, all in all, a great game from Fall of People will be paying more attention today in game two. I mean, game two. Uh, so we'll see what comes next, okay? They, yeah, absolutely. Guys, they serve notice that DK can't take them lightly. This is a best out of three. If you finish last year group, you don't move on to the playoffs. So DK, not off to a good start. We'll be back with more Christmas Day action from the G League in just a few minutes. GG.